Hello and welcome to the learning episode of Bee Farm on the unit called Study of Crude Drugs Part 5 under the section of Subject Pharmacognosy and Phytochemistry 2 of Semester 3 under Bee Farm. I am Dr. Payal Dande and today in this learning episode we are going to discuss the systematic study of drugs containing quinoline and isoquinoline alkaloids. We will first have a brief understanding about quinoline and isoquinoline alkaloids with their therapeutic significance and further we will discuss the systematic study of synchona as an example of quinoline type of alkaloids and also the other three drugs that are epicac, opium and curare which are the examples of the drugs containing isoquinoline type of alkaloids. Now let us learn about the systematic study of epicac which contains isoquinoline alkaloids. Epicac is commonly known as epicuana. It consists of the dried roots and the rhizomes of the plant Cephalis epicacuana and Cephalis acuminata belonging to the family Rubiaceae. It should contain nothing less than 2% of the total alkaloids in which at least 50% should be imatine, which is the active ingredient of this root. Now let us understand about the geographical source of this drug. The drug is grown in the countries like Rio, Brazil, India, Myanmar, Malaysia, Colombia, Panama and Nicaragua. Cephialis epicacuana is called Rio or Brazilian epicac just because it is obtained from Brazil. The other countries also produce the plant such as India, Myanmar and Malaysia. So, Cephalis acuminata is called as Panama or Cartagena epicac if it is mainly procured from Colombia, Panama, Nicaragua and India. Talking about its history, Epicacuana is a small shrub which is found in moist as well as shady forest. It was earlier known as Icpicaya in 1600 by Portuguese. It was introduced to Europe somewhere around in 1672. However, even before Europe, Ipicac was known in Brazil and it was used as an anti dysentric drug. Helvetus, a Dutch physician, introduced this drug in Europe in around 1688 under the name Brazilian root. In 1817, Pelletier and Magnedi first isolated imitine in the crude form and later in 1894, Paul and Conley separated imitine in pure form. Pyman succeeded in isolating two more alkaloids which are known as imetamine and O-methyl psychotrine. This isolation was made in the year 1917. So, having known about the uh, root as well as their isolation of imatine and other alkaloids, now let's move further to the cultivation, collection and preparation process of this drug. The commercial cultivation of Rio Epicac in India is being made in West Bengal. It is also called as Johor Epicac. Cultivated Epicac at the lower foot hills of eastern Himalayas gives better yield. However, the cultivation needs special attention as well as few precautions. The propagation is done by sowing the seeds in the month of January to mid-February. It is favorably grown in the temperature range of 23 to 28 degrees centigrade with a rainfall on of around 300 centimeter. The humid atmosphere helps in growth of plant. The nitrogenous fertilizers have significant effect in increasing the quantity of imatine which is the active ingredient of this drug. The percentage of all alkaloid is maximum in third year and hence harvesting of root is done after three years of vegetative growth. Let us now discuss about the difference in the macroscopical characters of Brazilian epicac and Panama epicac that are visible to differentiate the two different species. In Brazilian Ipicacuana, the roots are dark brick red to dark brown in color. They have faint odor and bitter taste. They are found as cylindrical and slightly tortuous pieces with 5 to 15 cm length and 15 mm thickness. 
they are closely annulated externally with ridges on rounded portion and completely encircling roots. The fractures are short in the bark and splintery in the wood. The pith is absent. Now let us see the other species that is the Panama Epicac. The Panama Epicac is greyish brown to reddish brown in color with faint order and bitter taste. They are identified due to their large size but slender shape with only 9 mm thickness. They are characterized by the absence of annulations and the presence of transverse ridges at an interval of 1 to 3 mm. They partially are encircled with the roots. Let us now observe the microscopic characters of the root. The transverse section of the root shows the presence of tangentially elongated cork layer with brown content. It is followed by 2 to 3 layers of phalloderm which is composed of thin walled parenchyma cells. Next to it is the cortex region that includes many layers of thin walled parenchyma cells containing starch grains and acicular crystals of calcium oxalate. Below cortex lies the phloem which is packed as small groups of sieve tissues that lies just above the cambium. The xylem region consists of tracheids, small xylem vessels along with medullary rays which are filled with starch grains. In rhizome, the transverse section shows the presence of pericycle with thick wall sclerites, protoxylum and spiral vessels. Columbian variety differs only in one aspect, that is, the starch grains are larger in size, that is up to 22 micron, whereas in the other species, it is only up to 15 microns. Okay, having known about the transverse section of the roots and rhizome, talking, let's now talk about the chemical constraints of this root. The isoquinoline alkaloids that are present in Ipecac belongs to the phenolic as well as non-phenolic groups. The total alkaloids in Rio Apicac are up to 2% while in Panama Apicac it is around 2.2%. The main alkaloids are as we said imatine, cephaline, cycotrine, omethylcycotrine and imetamide. The proportions of imatine and cephaline varies in the ratio in different varieties of Apicac. The drug contains psychotrine, imitamide and O-methyl psychotrine in minor amount. Now let us understand the importance of imatine. Medicinally, imatine is most important non-phenolic alkaloidal group and includes two things that is imatine as well as O-methyl psychotrine. While phenolic alkaloidal group includes cephaline and psychotrine. Epicac also contains epicuanic acid, glycosides, epicuanin, starch as well as calcium oxalate crystals. Now let us see few tests which are used for epicac drug. The first test includes 2.5 gram of powdered drug which is added to 20 ml of hydrochloric acid and 5 ml of water. Now it is shaken and finally filtered. To the filtrate, we add 0.5 gram of potassium chlorate. The presence of yellow color gradually changing to red after standing is due to the presence of imatine. The addition of sulfuric acid and sodium molybdate which is known as Freud's reagent to the small quantity of imatine can give bright green color. Okay, now that we have looked upon to the chemical test, let's move ahead to understand the quality standards that are mentioned for this drug. The total ash value for the drug should not be more than 5%. The acid insoluble ash value should not be more than 2%. And the foreign organic matter in the drug should not be more than 1%. Having known about the standards, now let us know its uses. Epica guana is expectorant in small doses while they have emetic action in higher doses. Cephaline has more emetic and less expectorant action as compared to imatine. Imatine hydrochloride is used as an antiprotozoal drug as it is highly toxic to amoeba such as Enta amoeba histolytica even at a very low concentration. Hence, it is used by parenteral root in the treatment of amoebic dysentery. 
It is also reported that imatine has anti-tumor properties. Okay, now let's see the doses of imatine. Imatine hydrochloride is given at a dose of 1 mg per kg body weight. Uh, the doses are usually administered in the form of subcutaneous uh, route or intramuscular route. But it should not exceed 60 mg and the administration should be only maximum up to 5 days. Let us look at the allied plants which are used for the isolation of imatine uh, other than Ipecac. So there are various genera which belongs to the family Rubiaceae and they contain imatine. Some of them are Elangium, Menetia, Passicotria, Boreria, Remagia and Ferdinandusa that are used as allied drugs. Dear friends, so far we have learned about the significance of quinolone and isoquinoline alkaloids and have also discussed about the drugs like Sincona and Epicac. We learned about their biological and geographical sources, the collection process, the chemical constraints as well as the pharmacological uses. If you have missed any of the module or content, then you can log on to our website known as www.cec.nic.in to download videos, FAQs, LORs and other contents so that you can stay updated with this chapter. Now let us move ahead to our next module which is going to give detailed systematic study of the drugs like opium and curare which contains isoquinoline alkaloids. Let us now discuss about the third drug that is opium. We will see the systematic study of opium which is commonly known as raw opium. It is the dried latex obtained by the incision given to the unripe capsules of papaver somniferum from the family papaveraceae. It is dried or partially dried by heat or spontaneous evaporation can take place. Some what irregularly shaped masses which are being formed after drying are known as natural opium. If it is molded into masses of more uniform size and shape, then they are called as manipulated opium. It contains not less than 10% of morphine, not less than 2% of codeine, which are calculated on the anhydrous basis. Let us understand about the geographical source. It is found to grow under the government regulations in countries like India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Turkey, Russia, China and Iran. Opium has been known to mankind since centuries and this is due to its narcotic properties. It was first cultivated in Mediterranean region and probably brought by Alexander in 327 BC. It is believed that even Dioscorides and Theophrastus were aware of the medicinal properties of opium. Use of opium is mentioned in some of the earliest written records like Historia Plantarum and De Materia Medica. Narcotin was the first alkaloid that was isolated from opium in the year 1803 by Derosin. Later, Sagnin isolated morphine in 1804. It was used in the medical practice since 1818. Gulland and Robinson elucidated the structure of morphine in the year 1923. In 1833, Robicate isolated codeine from opium while the company Merck isolated papaverine in 1848. Now let us see the cultivation, collection and preparation process which is only done for the medicinal practices for opium. Opium is cultivated under strict control of Narcotics Control Board of United Nations. In India, it is grown under the control of Government of India. It is found as an annual herb growing with white, pink and purple flowers. The plant is propagated via seeds. By the end of June, it grows up to a height of 1 to 1.5 meters and start bearing fruits. Several shallow incisions which are horizontal in nature 
are to be given to an unripe fruit which is green in color to collect the latex. The white milk which gets exuded gets coagulated and finally turns to brown and black color which happens after drying. The coagulated latex is stripped off and dried further under the shade and finally wrapped with the plant leaves to get natural opium. Further processing will yield manipulated opium that can be packed in the large cases for further use. As I have mentioned earlier, please take care that opium is strictly being controlled by the government of India and its use can only be done by the registered medical practitioners. Now let us understand the macroscopic characters of this drug. It has brown to black color with strong characteristic odor and bitter taste. Now let us see the macroscopic characters of the latex. It has brown to black color with strong characteristic odor and bitter taste. Opium grows in different countries which may vary in their macroscopical characters and also in their processing methods. The different varieties are known as per the country where it is produced. For example, Indian opium, Persian opium, natural Turkish or European opium, manipulated Turkish opium, manipulated European opium. Having known about the different varieties, now let us understand the chemical constituents which are present in the opium latex. The latex contains mainly the alkaloids which are derived from amino acid, phenylalanine and tyrosine. Chemically, they are placed under benzyl isoquinoline and phenanthrene types. Narcotine which is also known as noscapine along with narcine and papaverine belongs to the former group while morphine, codeine and thebane represents the latter category. Fruits of poppy contains numerous off-white colored minute seeds. These seeds contain 30 to 35 percent of fixed oil. This is used commercially in oil paint industry which is colorless, tasteless as well as transparent. Now let us see the chemical tests which are used for the opium. The general test to detect opium is by testing the presence of meconic acid. The alkaloids are present as the salts of meconic acid. Opium is dissolved in water and to the filtrate ferric chloride solution is added by which deep reddish purple color is obtained which persists even on addition of hydrochloric acid. The second test is for morphine. Morphine when sprinkled on nitric acid gives orange red color. Codeine does not respond to this test. The treatment of morphine solutions with potassium ferrocyanide and ferric chloride solution gives bluish green color. Codeine once again does not respond to this test. The next test is for papaverine. Papaverine solution in hydrochloric acid gives a lemon yellow color with potassium ferrocyanide solutions. These are the major tests which are being used to see the presence of opium alkaloids. Now let us talk about its uses. Opium belongs to the category of hypnotic and sedative drugs. Along with that they are also used as an analgesic in which the action is mainly due to morphine. Morphine is the potent analgesic drug. Due to its central narcotic effect it causes addiction. Hence it is given only in severe pains and in those cases when the patient does not show response to other analgesics. Morphine leads to nausea, vomiting and respiratory depression. Along with that, constipation is also one of the side effects. Codeine relieves local irritation in a bronchial tract and thereby used as an antitussive drug in various cough preparations. It has mild analgesic effect which are potent than aspirin but much lesser than morphine. Papaverine has smooth muscle relaxant effect on the intestine bronchial tract and the blood vessels. Similarly, narcotine has a specific depressant action on cuff and it is used for the preparation of cuff linctus. The synthetic morphine like compounds are called as opioids which are non-habit forming and they possess the medicinal activity of morphine. Now let us understand their doses. Morphine sulfate is given around 10 mg 6 times a day parenterally. 
codeine either codeine sulfate or codeine phosphate is given in the amount 10 to 20 mg every 4 to 6 hours orally narcotine is administered in the dose of 15 mg 4 times a day orally while papaverin hydrochloride is administered as 150 mg orally and 30 mg in the parenteral route let's talk about the storage of this drug Opium is preserved in well-closed container to prevent the loss of morphine. There are few adulterations which are also possible. The production of opium is under the strict control of government and hence normally it is not found to be adulterated. The adulterated form shows the presence of opium capsules in powdered form, gums as well as in the form of sugary fruits. Now let us see some allied plants. The various other species of poppy which do not contain morphine are Papaver argimon, Papaver dubium, Papaver oriental along with the plants from the genera argimon and S. solazia, both belonging to the family Papaveraceae. Among all these species, Papaver bracteatium has scored more importance as it does not contain morphine which causes addiction. The amount of total alkaloids and the consequent percentage of thebane is also very high. Because of such morphine-free contents, this species is more significant as a potential new source of opiates. Now let us learn about the systematic study of the next drug known as curare which contains isoquinoline type of alkaloids. Curare is commonly known as South American arrowroot poison. The biological source consists of the dried poisonous extract obtained from different plants which are found in the Amazon region like Brazil and Peru. The extract of all such plant is called as curare. The plants that belongs to the family Loganiaceae and many Spermiaceae are some of the prominent members which yield curare. Let's see few of them. Some plants like Chondrodendron tomentosum, Strychnos castellania, Strychnos crevoxia, Strychnos toxifera are the plants which contains alkaloid tuber tubercurarine. Similar alkaloids but which slightly differs from tubercurarine are obtained from the genera like Stephania, Menispermum, Cyclea, Pleogyne and Enospermus from the family Menispermaceae. Now let us look at their geographical source. All such plants are available from the geographical regions such as Brazil, Peru, Colombia, Guana and Venezuela. Uh, talking about its history, it is reported by Sir Walter Rail and Pedro de Leon that the plant preparations called by various names Kurari, Urari, Urari etc. were used in the battle for the arrows and spears as well as for killing animals. Sir Benjamin Rudy in 1812 showed that the extract causes asphyxiation. Claude Bernard in 1844 suggested that curares had a capacity to interfere with the passage of nerve impulses from brain to muscles. Tubercurarine was isolated by Bohem in 1898. Previously, the extract was described by different names depending on the method which was used for their storage. For example, calabash curare which was stored in the shell of a ground. Then we had pat curare which was stored in the earthenware containers and we had tube curare which was stored in the bamboo tubers. Let us see how does it look like. Curare appears as a black or brown resinous material having a bitter taste. Curare is soluble in cold water as well as in dilute alcohol. The important chemical constituents of curare uh, contains tuber curarine, curine, Curarine, isochondrodendrine, cyclianine, chondrocurine, tomentocurine, etc. Among all of them, tubercurarine is most potent in activity and has bisbenzyl isoquinoline moiety with quaternary structure. 
It is insoluble in organic solvents but is soluble in water. Now let us see few tests which are used to identify them. The saturated solution of tuberculin gives a green color with ferric chloride solution. Similarly, in the second test, we can treat the mercuric nitrate solution uh, along with tuberculin, which can give cherry red color. Now, let us talk about their uses. Because of the neuromuscular blocking action, the main alkaloid of curare, which is known as tuberculin, is used as a skeletal muscle relaxant. It is used in surgical operations to relax the abdominal muscles due to which lower and safer dose of general anesthesia can be applied. It is also occasionally used to aid the diagnosis of myasthenia gravis. Dear friends, here we come, came to an end of our discussion on the systematic study of drugs containing quinoline as well as isoquinoline alkaloids. I am sure you have got a fair idea about the significance of these alkaloids and the pharmacognostic features of Sincona, Epicac, OPM and Curare. If you have missed any of the module or content, then you may log on to our website www.cec.nic.in to download the videos, FAQs, LORs and other contents so that you can stay updated with this chapter.